So what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're in the afternoon. It's about to get dark right now. And what I want to talk to you guys about today is not really this one, but these guys here. They're they're a big vital part, if I can film, of the farm. And that's our our dogs. Actually all five of them, actually except for this one right there, because she's annoying. Oh, Pepper. But these guys in a lot of videos get overlooked. They tend to get overlooked big time because um, they stay in our yard because we use these guys here. We got two of them, two of these big boys here. They're Anatolian Shepherd Great Pyrenees Mix. And they stay in our yard and they're livestock guardian dogs. And they actually do guard our livestock. And they're the probably the biggest reason why we haven't lost a predator yet here in almost two years that we've been here. It's this guy right here. This is Hercules. And then Harley, come on. Okay, this is, that's Harley. That's Harley. And they're hitting me. Okay, good boys. Okay. And these guys here, along with the other three dogs, they do a great job protecting the farm, not so much filming. And this is also a reason why you guys don't see them too much. Too terribly much, huh, buddy? Huh. They might be neglected on film, but they are definitely, definitely not neglected uh, um, on the farm. They're interacted with more than any other animal. We got two of them that sleep on the bed with us. There's, and then there's Pepper and these guys here who bark all night long to keep all of our animals safe. See, we have a pretty good sized backyard. It goes and wraps around the entire house. So the the boys here, they stay in the yard they don't go they don't go outside um main reason why is because we live on us uh, hey boys hey 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 easy hey hey easy okay the highway that we live off of is the main drag into town and it's a 70 mile an hour highway and uh i love these boys way too much to be able to turn them out um with the animals because somewhere on 30 acres there's somewhere that a fence is going to fail there's somewhere that you know it's just it's going to happen that they're going to get out and that highway there is a death sentence for these guys but we still need them to be able to protect you know the ducks and geese mainly you know we have ducks geese llamas um and our longhorns here and not worried about the llamas or the longhorns. A llama can take a coyote or anything that's thrown at that's thrown at it out this way. You know, bobcat and anything like that. There might be a mountain lion or something like that. There's always a rumor of, you know, something being around these parts. And the longhorns, they're perfectly fine. In a video um, I did a while ago, I talked about how longhorns, I think, in my opinion, can actually be used as livestock guardians. Pepper, please, this dog. We actually had a couple stray dogs come our way and they mixed in with the longhorns and uh, they were chasing the neighbor's cows. Well, when, um, when the dogs came over on this side, we had our longhorns actually charge at them. Our big lead cow, Betty, with the one with the big horns that you see in the videos, she actually was able to get a horn underneath like the stomach of the dog and flip it and it did a, th a, th a, yeah, a 360 mid air and landed back on its feet and both of those ran off. So as far as uh, the longhorns, they're not an issue. They're more than fine. They're more than protected. But the ducks and geese, they aren't. The, the geese do a great job on aerial predators. They do a fantastic job on the aerial predators. No hawk, no owl, no nothing has gotten them from above. Pro an aerial predator probably is not going to mess with them because a 25-pound goose is going to outweigh it'll outweigh a big owl and it will definitely outweigh a hawk. They're not going to just mess with it. And they see two of them there. They, they just scare them off. A coyote, on the other hand, will definitely take a goose. A goose will put up a fight. A goose will put up a fight, and you know, those things get pretty pretty big, and they can be kind of aggressive uh, when need to be. But we have an electric fence around them, and that electric fence keeps the coyotes at bay to a degree. But the main thing is, is that we don't have to want to rely on the electric fence to protect our ducks and geese. And that electric fence there is kind of a last resort, you know, method. Ideally, you know, coyotes wouldn't be around the farm. And I'm not gonna be one that says, oh, we need to shoot every coyote that we see. Why? Because if you shoot a coyote, numbers show it too. You shoot a coyote, that territory opens up, more coyotes move in, and the population grows that way. It doesn't make sense, you know, but when you think about it and see what actually happens, it makes sense. So we want coyotes around here, but we want the good coyotes. The coyotes that will stay on the fringes, that'll stay away from our livestock, and that'll stay away from a barking dog. And you can see, this is the view from our technical backyard, and dogs can see all around. 
and there's a bunch of spots where they can even see the front of the house so we live on 30 acres here and on what we'll call 12 acres we have this halo effect of the dogs that the coyotes are just going to stay away from and we know this because when we go on the other side of the farm the other 18 acres you'll see you know coyote poop you'll see pig poop you'll see you know you'll see tracks of other things we've seen a, a dead skunk way out by the pond we've seen we've seen a lot of stuff just tracks of stuff but when I look out here when I look in the front there's nothing there's nothing why because of these dogs see a coyote when it wants to go kill you know its prey it has to be laser focused locked in it's got to be just it, it the only thing you can focus on is making a kill when you have a barking dog that it's worried about, you know, they don't really understand the fences. They're gonna, you know, they'll, they'll lock in on a duck or a goose when, when they're back here or when they're in the front. They'll see it from far away, but also the boys see them and they'll bark at it. They'll bark at it. And every time a coyote, you know, it gets, it gets focused, but then barking dog, it's gotta look away, look away. It's just not gonna mess with it. They're gonna go find something easier and a lot less stressful to hunt. And I tell you, these boys do a great job. They are on it day and night. You hear them at all hours of the, uh, of the day, all hours in the morning. And it's funny how dogs work. It's funny how animals work. They learn to communicate with each other and you can see it, you can hear it happen every day. Dogs will learn kind of what's a threat, what's not a threat. You know, sometimes they'll bark at a bunny, sometimes they'll bark at a squirrel, and sometimes they'll bark at a turtle too. That's happened by the way. But for the most part now, when they see a squirrel go running, you know, to get one of our pecan trees, They'll just look at it and go, huh, that's no big deal. When they see a bunny, sometimes they bark at it, sometimes they don't. The geese, on the other hand, have no clue, have no clue. Anytime they see something move, they start honking, they start squawking. It doesn't matter if it's animal, it doesn't matter if it's the male, it doesn't matter. If it moves, the geese are gonna go do their thing. The dogs somehow have learned to listen for the geese. They've learned to listen for the geese. If the geese start, you know, squawking, the dogs, will run over to the fence, look out to where they're at, and they'll start barking. And when these dogs here start barking, I can hear them. And you know, you start to learn their different barks and stuff. But who really learns our different bar who really learns their different barks because they speak dog is our two inside dogs. When the two inside dogs, Jenny and Callie, are half shepherds, half lab, when they hear the outside boys start barking, then they'll start barking and let me know. It's, it's so it's funny for most of the time, it's a chain reaction how things work around here and then I can go check to make sure everything's cool but these boys here they're about to turn three years old in January and I'll tell you they do a great job they're expensive as all heck to feed because uh, this guy right here is about 160 pounds no joke and this bad boy here is about 140 so together we have about 300 pounds of dog right there so needless to say our feed bill yeah that's um, pretty high but they are 100% worth it. How about Good boys, good boys, okay, okay. So, and they can do their jobs of protecting the farm here and uh, we can keep them kind of contained in our yard. They're happy here, they know, they know all the spots, they know what they're doing and they get to be kind of half pets, half livestock guardians. And to this date, we've yet to lose, you know, an animal to a predator and I have to attribute it to this guy right here, and this guy right here, mainly. And these guys kind of lounge around all day. They do their thing. Then the daytime, they're you know in the summer they kind of just go into. A, we we let them have access to our garage. And it's nice and cool in there. But when the sun goes down like it is right now, their job uh, they step up and do their job every night, every night. Now it's not always all perfect with them. They uh, they're twin brothers. Um, neither of them are fixed. So there's, there's some jockeying that still goes on. And uh, they, they, they get into it every once in a great while. And when that happens, it's not, a, it's not a good thing. But for the most part, they've calmed down a lot. And it happens very, very sporadically now. But is it recommended to get two uh, livestock guardian dogs at the same time? No, I didn't know that. I, did, I tried to do as much research as I can. But it was only until you know, I got them that I found out it wasn't the best idea, but they was already attached to them. I said, you know what? I'm pretty good with dogs. We'll make it work, huh, bud? And so far, so good. We've made it, we've made it work. And uh, to having two intact male livestock guardian dogs hasn't, had that, hasn't been that big of an issue, huh, bud? 
and as you can see they're ferocious but super sweet yeah. and some people might say hey you know what you should just build a better fence to be able to let them roam the property and everything and you could be right but the Great Pyrenees especially they like to roam I mean it's not uncommon for Great Pyrenees to end up three four five miles away from their from their house um, because they're always trying to expand their territory they're always they, they, they find a way to get out and we've seen that with Mr. Harley back here he's like Houdini I mean this is a chain link fence that we have and he's found the tiniest little hole in this just this yard here and he's gotten out uh, once or twice thankfully he stayed close thankfully I was able to know about it right away and we got him back in no problems but to be able to fence in 30 acres to keep these guys contained is just not feasible they're always gonna be a weak spot in the fence there's no matter how big or short the fence is there's always gonna be a weak spot and these guys I know will end up fighting it they'll end up on the road and that's not a good thing at all and that's why the average lifespan of a livestock guardian dog is only a couple years not because of coyotes not because they're actually having to you know try and defend anything it's because they roam and they get out on the highway and I made a promise to myself that when we moved here that is a 70 mile an hour highway I said I'm gonna do everything I can to where that's not gonna happen to our boys but we're gonna be able to put them in position to still do their job because they really do a great job here and on this entire part of the farm here there has I've, I've walked this thing I don't know how many times sometimes I just go out for a walk or when I move the cows and I'm always checking to see is there any kind of tracks is there any kind of you know poop from any kind of animal and you never see it you just never see it out here over there out beyond yeah you do you do it's pretty frequent actually but over on this side there's nothing there's nothing they do one heck of a job and you know they they get expensive they get you know they fight every once in a while and you got to break it up but for what they do my gosh they are 100 percent worth it huh guys so what that means going forward is that if we have an animal if we bring on an animal here that is going to be you know susceptible to predators I'm not talking a cow i'm not talking a llama you know things that aren't be able to defend themselves or their mamas won't be able to defend them we're going to keep them over here on this side of the farm and those animals are probably going to consist of you know ducks geese chickens turkeys you know poultry probably we might even get some sheep and we'll try and run them either one with the longhorns to where you know they get bonded to the cows and they're you know synced together and the cows can protect them or we'll run them out here where we really do need it we really do need the the birds to come on this side of the farm because the the hills here the soil is actually a lot more shallow than the other side and we've seen the wonders that the poultry has done for the pasture out where the ducks and the chickens have been and hopefully we can bring them back here next year and they'll have protectors and not have to worry about getting eaten so as it gets dark um, we're gonna turn it over to these guys and let them go on patrol all night and they're gonna keep away all the coyotes and she's gonna keep away everybody else because she's annoying oh, that dog you guys can hear her probably in all the videos barking and yapping I mean, this is my grandma's dog that you know she wanted us to take care of and that face says it all so I'm gonna turn it over to you bud yeah 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 look at those so, so ferocious so ferocious oh yeah good boy good boy here Achilles and uh, yeah he's got a big head nothing's gonna mess with him no animal no human no nothing why because that's 160 pounds of just yikes and then you also have to deal with his brother at the same time it ain't happening so i know this is a little bit different way to use livestock guardian dogs but i think it's a great way keeps them safe it keeps our ducks safe and it keeps me not stressed about them getting out huh buddy good boy and i can kind of get close to them and you know see them as pets and everything too so with that hope you learned something hopefully you know this inspires you to maybe get Livestock Guardian Dog to help uh, protect you and your farm. And with that, we're going to catch you on the next one, right, bud? Okay, send them off. So is, that, so is that a good deal? Yeah, good. That's a good deal, huh? That's a real good deal. Okay, deal? Deal. Good deal, huh? Good boy.